I'm here with photographer and photographic educator Gavin Hoey. Gavin, it's great to have you here. It's brilliant to be here. Thank you for having me. I'd really like to hear a bit about the types of work that you do. Yeah, I do all sorts of things. I'm a photographer, as you say, yeah. and an educator. So I photograph everything from fashion through to my personal work, landscapes, people, anything. I love photography. And I love to help people to get better at their photography as well. That's kind of my, my other passion. Yeah, are you kind of with your camera everywhere you go, waking, Absolutely. sleeping? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sad to say it really is absolutely everywhere. It's, 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 there from, it is. it's on the desk in front of <laughs> we me. We know it's there, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love taking my camera everywhere. It's pictures all around us, and even though I'm doing it Professionally, I'm always finding little things to photograph and, and new places to go and shoot. Great. I'd love to see some of your work. Can you yeah. show us some of the projects? Of course, yeah. Let's have a little look. So I do a range of different projects. So there are a, a wide variety of things that I shoot. So, for example, I'll shoot random things, at least seemingly random things, uh, like this, like this. And you, you take it at the time and you think, well, what am I going to do with a picture like that? And that's kind of one yeah. of the things of photography is sometimes you'll take pictures and you'll not necessarily have an idea. You're that's just drawn to the composition, yeah. the image, the colours, yeah. anything. I, I, I can't even tell you what it is sometimes. Yeah, it's yeah. that little kind of, I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to take it anyway. Yeah. And that's the, the modern world we live in. Yeah. In this case, took the shot and then it was only afterwards I thought, yeah, I, I can do something in Photoshop with this. Uh -huh. And I created a, a little action that made this kind of folded piece of paper effect, yeah. which is, it's, it's not complicated to make, but yeah. if you can turn it into an action, yeah. it becomes a one-click process. Yeah. I love to share this sort of stuff. So that ended up on my website, shared yeah. with the world. Yeah. And that's what you do with photography, you're sharing. Yes, creating and sharing, getting inspiration from everywhere. Completely. Let's take a look at some of the rest. So this one's a, a little bit more of a uh, sort of a fashion style of shoot. Yeah. And uh, this one's actually my daughter, to be fair. Uh, and, She's uh, beautiful, isn't she? She, she is absolutely adorable. And bubbles, well, who doesn't love a few bubbles? Come on, love a bit of bubbles. She's done very well to get all those bubbles to sit in the right place in that shot, hasn't she? <laughs> okay, so uh, here's the secret then. Um, there may not have been quite so many bubbles in the original shot. Yeah. Um, have you worked with Photoshop? I did add a image, few more yeah. in Photoshop. But, and that's, that's the great thing. If you know a little bit about Photoshop, you know you can shoot on black backgrounds and change blending modes to, to blend things in. Yeah. You photograph bubbles on a black background, you yeah. drop them in and... Bingo. Total flexibility. More bubbles. You just don't tell anyone you've done it. Oh, sorry. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else have we got there? So right. this is one of my personal projects. This is one of the things I absolutely love to do, and it's 180 degree panoramas. Yeah. Because I think with modern digital cameras nowadays, when you, when you take a picture, you see the result instantly. Mm, mm. And I go back to the film days where that never happened. There was yeah. that mystery of getting your film back. Remember yeah, those days? Yeah, yeah. yeah great fun. <laughs> Panoramas stitched together in Photoshop mm. still have that mystery. Yes, I don't know what I'm going to do. So we're get. not talking about the instant kind of pan it around and do it in the camera. We're talking about no. taking individual shots here and yeah, absolutely. combining them in the software. Some right? cameras will do that. My mm. phone will do that. But I love that mystery, that sense yeah. of the unknown. And it's not until you stitch them together and yeah. Photoshop finishes the whole process. So well. And it's like, yeah, that's something different. And it is because yeah. it's not quite what you see with your eye. It's yeah. just a little bit wider, a little bit bigger. And of course, if you're capturing those individual shots as you pan around, rather than doing it within the camera, you're going to end up with a much larger oh, image, aren't you? Huge file yeah, size. Yeah. And then that's right. Photoshop doesn't care. It can handle it. It deals with it, doesn't oh, no it? No problem at all. It's, it's only when you go and look at it and you think, wow, that is a whoppingly big yeah, file size. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to make giant prints. Yeah. yeah, no problem at all. So you've talked a little bit about how you've worked with Photoshop in those images. How do you work with Photoshop in the rest of your projects and in your lifestyle in general? So Photoshop for me is the, is the go-to application. Yeah. And uh, I shoot mostly in RAW, so I just bring an image into Photoshop, I can edit it in RAW and then go back into Photoshop for those little fine-tuning nuances. Yeah. And the reason I love that is I can literally jump in, edit in RAW and jump out again. Yeah. And, and that really suits the way I, I work and I edit my pictures. So there have been a lot of updates to Photoshop CC since the launch of the Creative Cloud, right? How do you manage to keep on top of all of those features, keep up to date? Yeah, there have been 
a lot, haven't they? Yeah. And then there are so many features and not all of them are for photographers. And, yeah. and that's great because it means you don't have to know absolutely everything. Yeah. So I tend to go through, look for the things that are relevant to me mm. and then I'll go and do some research because yeah. I don't have the ability just to say, okay, new feature, I know how to use it. I, I don't. You so, can probably work some of it out, but you might not be getting the most out of it. Right? Yeah, I mean, some things are yeah. fairly straightforward, but mm. if you want to really get the best out of it, I'll jump into uh, Adobe TV. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a great resource. Yeah. There's some superb videos on there. 10 minutes watching a video, yeah. you are an expert in yeah. that particular feature. And of course, you can access tutorials directly from your Creative Cloud desktop app as well. So there's some really nice short form videos that you can do in your lunch hours and that sort of thing. Yeah, it? and that's probably what you want. You just want that little yeah. bite sized bit of information to get you going, get the job done, yeah. learn the new feature. So Gavin, you've selected some of the key features that you use on a regular basis that are really, really important to you within Photoshop CC since the launch of Creative Cloud. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through those now? Sure can. OK, let's jump into Photoshop and have a little look. So let's go pick a picture and uh, we'll, we'll choose one. Here we go. Perfect example. Now, you mentioned earlier that I take my camera around with me everywhere. Yeah. I do, but there are times when you just can't carry a big, heavy digital SLR camera around. Yeah. So I will carry my little mobile phone with me everywhere. I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. As a photographer, what I want is the very, very best picture. And my phone's great, but Photoshop can give it that edge. Yeah. So one of my favorite, favorite new features is the ability to take a picture from my phone yeah. into Photoshop mm -hmm. and then go to filter and go down to camera raw filter. So I can take my, my JPEG from my phone yeah. straight into camera raw. Not a raw format, but you can now use the editing capabilities that raw. Completely. So you don't have the, the strength and depth of a raw file, but mm -hmm. what you have is the sheer convenience that raw gives you in Adobe camera raw. So yeah. I can come here, for example, I can tweak the white balance on this image to really give it that, that punchy sunset color that I kind of wished was there, yeah. but it <laughs> If it only wasn't. life could be as beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, I can go in and use, I, I've got to say, my favorite slider in RAW, which clarity. is clarity. Yeah, I know, I'm a bit of a... Such a nice touch, oh, isn't yeah, it? I'm a total clarity junkie. I, I know I shouldn't, <laughs> but it's... Uh, you can, yeah. And it's, it's twice as strong, and you guys have made it twice as strong and yeah. without the haloing, and it's, yeah. it's just... It's uh, so beautifully refined yeah. feature now, isn't it? Okay, so done the clarity, and uh, we're just going to punch up the vibrance because you know, kind of... I like a bit of colour. If you're going to have colour, make it really vibrant. Uh, and then we can do a few other things. We can go and get, for example, the, the radial filter. Yeah. The radial filter I find really good if all I want to do is just add a little bit of vignetting around the outside because it just gives the, the colours the correct colour rather than being a little bit grey as some of the vignettes you can find inside yeah. of Photoshop do. So that and corrects any, uh, anything within the lens that's kind of got in there that shouldn't. Yeah, the ironic thing is I try and avoid lens vignetting all the time, mm. but then I go and add it in in Photoshop to <laughs> Pretty much in a controlled way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's my vignetting, and that makes it perfectly okay. So that, that's that's a good stuff to do. So we can go and do that, and we can take our JPEG files into RAW, and then from RAW straight back into Photoshop, and then from Photoshop I can share it on Behance, or I can yeah. put it on my Creative Cloud, or I can print it out. I can do what I want with it. Yeah, fantastic. What's up next? Okay, so next, let's close that down and do something completely different. So one of the other new features that's come around recently uh, is going to be the content aware changes. And content aware is just one of those just fantastic things. When it works, it is amazing. Yeah. And now it works pretty much every time, yeah. at least enough for me to, to use it on a regular basis. Yeah. And there have been some nice updates to content aware just in the last release, actually, of the Creative Cloud. It's a there? pretty modern new little change. Yeah. And it's, it's in a few different places you're going to mm -hmm. find it. The place I use it most is in the patch tool. And there's been some, some nice new changes in the patch tool in, in recent times. So let's see how we, uh, we go about it. So I'm going to grab myself the patch tool and I'm going to make sure that the patch tool is set to content aware. So there's some new little features in there, but to start with, I'm just going to use it the way I've always used it, which is to draw a rough and particularly not very good, but I'll do my best. There we go. Look, that'll do. Selection around the thing I want to remove. Yeah. And then I'm going to reposition the selection just by dragging it. And I can just come across here. And the reason I love the patch tool is you see straight away. You've got a nice preview there, yeah. haven't you? You get yeah. a pretty guy, a good idea about lining stuff up, which yeah. is really handy. So let go, and you will get a patch. Now, sometimes, occasionally, it's not quite what you want. Yeah. It doesn't quite look right. And that's where the new features just win the day completely. Yeah. So that nuance of change now, you've got the control over, haven't you? It is, and it is a nuance, but it just makes all the difference yeah. when you nail it. So we've got two new, new things here. We've got structure, but particularly colour. And what does structure refer to? 
So structure really refers to the tightness around the edge of your selection. So it's, it's kind of easier to see it, to be honest, yeah. and the best way is just to grab yourself the structure slider and just chuck it from one end to the other, and that, that's exactly what I do. I'll move it to the yeah. extremes. So if we go all the way up to seven, it'll give me a much tighter edge. It's yeah. a much clearer. There's less blending going on there. Much less blending, a yeah. bit like it used to be. Mm -hmm. That's fine, and sometimes that's what you want. Yeah. Sometimes you want less, so go down in the other direction, go down to one, and you'll get a much softer blend yeah. to your selection. Mm. Oh yeah, I see the difference there, absolutely. Now, that's fine, but I think in this case, I want to be perhaps somewhere more in the middle. So let's uh, just move it around. And that's kind of how I use the tool. I'll pop it in a few different places yeah. and see what really appeals, what works, what doesn't, and I'll find a spot. Mm. But I find it's the color slider that's really made the biggest difference. Yeah. Colour slider allows me to get colours that are a closer match. Now in this shot, it, it kind of looks okay, I don't mind it too much, but if I just change my colour slider a little bit, I'll get a, a remapping of the whole effect. So what that does is it looks at the texture from the place that you're choosing to fill from, and it looks at the colour that you're filling to, so that it'll match that in much more seamlessly. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It, okay. It's, um, I mean, that's a really good description of what it does. I, I just like to think of it as a little bit of magic because it just seems to work. And, it, and, and that's what all I want. All yeah. I want from a product is for it just to work. Yeah, it's Adobe magic. That's it is all Adobe there is magic, that's it. That's what it is. It's <laughs> a, a good description. Okay, great. And it's really simple to use. So once you've done one part, you can then just go grab yourself uh, another little bit from up here where yeah. we've got a, got a bit of spectator. And we can just go and patch him in every single time, moving it across, fine tuning the position, yeah. fine tuning the results. Yeah. But it's quick and it's simple. And I can clean up this image yeah. uh, in, uh, in a pretty, pretty nifty, pretty convincing way. Great, so what's up next? So next is something that as a photographer, I find myself ha having to do occasionally, but it's, yeah. it's not my day job. It's yeah. a little bit of text work. Okay. Uh, and this happens with clients. They want to add a little bit of text to their images. Yeah. And as a photographer, you have to be able to, to handle that. Mm -hmm. Photoshop CC 2014, big advance for us as a photographer yeah. because we've got some great text tools. Great, let's have a look. So here we've got a, a perfect example. I've got a album cover we were designing for this guy. We did all the layout. I did, I say we, I did all the layout. And the, the guy said, yes, love it, but I want that picture instead of the original picture. Yeah. No problem, the client is always right. I will bend over backwards to do it for him, but I'm gonna have to move around all my text. So let's go grab ourselves a, a layer and the move tool, and I can move my text around, but I get these amazing little lines that allow me to line everything up. Some smart guides there. Yeah, and, uh, and that, as a photographer is brilliant because it just makes my life so much really simpler. Really time saving that, isn't it? Than having to set up the guides individually yourself. Totally. I don't need to know about guides. I just need to know that I can move stuff around yeah. on screen and I can position it and I know everything's nice and lined up. I can't tell you how much time that's saved. Fantastic. So the other big time saver as well is in the fonts. Yes. Now, there are a lot of fonts. There <laughs> are. Don't you love Typekit as well? <laughs> I love the choice of fonts that we have now, yeah. and so do my clients. Yeah. And we could spend hours with a few of my clients going just through the fonts and yeah. choosing fonts. And after looking font. at them in situ is really important with the it, rest of the image. Right? It is. Yeah. And before it was possible, but it wasn't exactly convenient. Yeah. Move on to today, and now all I need to do is I just select all of my type layers. Yeah. I grow, grab the uh, the type tool, and I can just go down through my, my list of fonts here, and uh, they just change on screen. You can preview them live. Fantastic. Oh, that's just just fantastic. Such a, a lovely way to work, and so much time saved for me as a as a photographer. Okay, Gavin. So what's up next? Next is one of the smaller changes, but the thing that's had possibly one of the biggest impacts on my general photography. Yeah. And it's all about HDR, uh -huh. high dynamic range images. Although now I tend to call it exposure blending because that's really what I'm doing. Yes. So here it is. This is what I do. I bring my images that I've shot, all different exposures, into HDR Pro. And I do exactly what I've always done, but one small change. Yeah. Now I come down to the complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw button. Yeah. Check it. Click on the box that says Tone in ACR, yeah. and in one click, I jump from HDR Pro yeah. into Adobe Camera Raw. Ah, uh, nice. And it's just fantastic. Yeah. And not only that, it's a 32-bit file. Wow. And that is, I mean, huge, Powerful. huge amount of data. Yeah. I've got an incredible 20 stops of dynamic range mm -hmm. in this image. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the, the amount of range that we can only dream of <laughs> of getting out the it camera. It is the thing of dreams. It is. <laughs> as, I, as I go through the exposures, it's like I've taken every single exposure and I could reshoot this shot yeah. at any exposure I choose. That's incredible, isn't it? If you haven't played with this, this is just one of those things. 
that will utterly change the way you do high dynamic range images. So what's your final top feature for us, Gavin? So the last thing we're going to look at is some of the new blur tools. And these are absolutely fantastic. And the, the example I've got on screen here is a perfect example. It was part of a tutorial session we did that also ended up as a fashion shoot as well because my work tends to, to blur like that sometimes. Sure, sure. And it was a great shoot. And at the end of it, we looked at the pictures and we decided it would be really good if rather than having a, a frozen static moment in time, we had some movement and blur in their hair. Add some of those dynamics back into the shot. Yeah. Now, doing it in the camera might have been possible, but in Photoshop, it's actually become really straightforward and yeah. very, very convincing to do as well. It's, it's almost better than doing it in the camera. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go grab myself filter, and I'm going to go to the blur gallery, and I'm going to choose path blur. Uh, now, path blur is, at one level, very, very straightforward. Uh, and that's kind of why I like it, because I kind of like stuff that's straightforward. It, it fits in with me rather well, <laughs> I might say. Uh, and I can give this lovely blur, straight line blur, but the reason I love the path blur is simply because I can then go and add extra paths and extra um, movement to the, uh, to the hair or anything else by adding in new points. And I can follow the hairline just to give some, some blurring and movement into the hair. Right. So we can come and uh, increase the, the speed of the blur and really make it look like the hair's moving. But I know what you're thinking. Yeah. Her face isn't looking so great now, Gavin. Yeah, that probably wasn't <laughs> part of the plan. So what we want to do is we want to bring the face back. Now, we could have done this with layers and layer masks, but we can also do it right here inside of the, the, the path blur. So I can just come and add another one. There we go, we just add another blur. And this is where you want to go and watch the Adobe TV videos, because if I hadn't seen the videos, I wouldn't have known I could yeah, do this. Yeah. Uh, I can go and select one end of my path, and I can bring the endpoint speed down Go select the other end, do the same thing, and I can pull back the sharpness on the face. You're counteracting the other blur there. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it it's blur. so easy to do. Uh, but then, of course, I've now got a clear side, a blurry side, and mm. I want to just add a bit more blur in here. And I can keep building up these little path blurs and just building up the effect in, in such an organic way that it just fits in with the whole picture. And it really gives the effect that I wanted to achieve. Movement in the hair, sharpness in the face. Yeah. Gavin, thank you so much for sharing all of those tips with us. Some really, really good time-saving features and a lot of Adobe magic as well. Absolutely, yeah. I'd really like to get your advice now for those people who are starting out in the industry looking to get into photography, maybe professionally, maybe just from a personal point of view. Uh, what advice would you have for them? Well, if you're going to start out in photography, now is probably the best time ever as a right. photographer. We've got so many great cameras and such great software to edit your pictures. Yeah. And that's the place to start. Learn the cameras, yeah. learn the software. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can do that is by taking pictures. Yeah. The more pictures you take, the more time you spend in Photoshop, that's where your skills are going to come from. And by doing that, you can develop a style. And a style is what you're always after. Nobody can tell you what a style is. You have to develop it over time. Time is the key factor. Yeah, I was going to ask you actually how important it is to have your own style. Is that something that gets you specific work and projects? Yeah, absolutely, it can do. Um, there are some fantastic photographers whose pictures you can name. You can say, yeah, I know who took that shot. Yeah. If you can get to that level, you are made. Yeah. For most of us, it's perhaps not that easy. So if you're starting out professionally, you want to try and build up your portfolio slowly. Yeah. Keep taking pictures, keep taking jobs, and then build and slowly you'll get better and better. And how important is it to have an online portfolio, and online presence for people to see your work? Oh, it's, it's, it's massive. I mean, there, yeah. there is no other word for it. You've got to be online nowadays. Yeah. Uh, for a perfect example, I needed a portfolio for my, my fashion photography. Yeah. I needed it really quick. And to create one, I, I mean, I don't know. I know nothing about developing. I'm a photographer. What do I know? But what I do know is with the Creative Cloud, I've got Adobe Muse. Yes. And Adobe Muse, absolutely fantastic. Yes. Ten minutes on Adobe TV, watching a couple of videos on Adobe Muse, and I could create my very own portfolio. And it's amazing. And I absolutely love my portfolio. Yeah. It's very simple. I mean, it's never going to win any design awards, but it does exactly what I need. And it's quick and it's simple to do. And how long did it take you to build within Adobe Muse? Honestly? Yes. From starting Tell I us. nothing about <laughs> Adobe Muse, it took about an hour and a half. Wow, amazing. I know. I so you it. really think that anybody who's used to working with the Photoshop interface can watch a tutorial, come into Adobe Muse and start working? Well, I did it. And if yeah. I can do it, I think pretty much anybody can. It really is a very easy place to work because it has so many of the, the friendly Adobe tools we know and love. Yeah. And, and the, the, back, uh, the backup with all the videos, 
yeah, you can do it, you really can. And guys, really do check out Muse. There's loads of tutorials, like Gavin says, online, but also you've got the ability within the software to create not just your desktop version, but also your tablet and your phone version as well. So your portfolio is gonna look right wherever someone's viewing yep, it, right? Totally. Yeah. Okay, Smashing, thank you so much for that, Gavin. Really appreciated your time and all of those fantastic tips. Brilliant, thanks for having me. So next up, guys, we've got the first of our Adobe Max videos. It's time to see the newly updated and fully connected creative profile in action.